welcome to TCACLA. This is our second virtual open house. Glad you could join us. I am here with several of my colleagues, my team members here at the Trauma Counseling Center of Los Angeles. Um, let me introduce you to Sarah Schupack. Hi. Jennifer Dodd. Hello. And Victoria Anderson. Hi. So we're just having a little conversation here about working with trauma because that's what we do. One of the things that's always on my mind is like, why do I like working with trauma? Why do you guys like, like working with trauma? I really like working with trauma because I think that a lot of times there's this conception that we're going to work on this really scary stuff, this big, big snowball of emotions and um, big emotions. But oftentimes when we're doing trauma therapy, we actually get to uncover clients' resiliency and their strengths. And this untold story that clients, it gets forgotten about because trauma can really separate us from our strengths, from our inner self and our resources. So it's this really cool discovery process for clients. And I get to bear witness to that. That I came here and I was like, oh my God, I'm actually pretty good at this. So. And I really like seeing people, um, they come in and they're in, they're in distress and they don't know what to do and they don't know how to make their lives better. And even in a few short sessions, um, I, I can see a real change, especially with you know using EMDR and somatic work and things like that. Well, that's the thing too, I think to your point, Victoria, when we are trained in modalities that are specifically yeah. designed for working with trauma, it's a very different experience. For me, when I was a young person and I was in therapy and they would say, how do you feel? Um, that was a question that didn't lead me to a place that I could do anything. I couldn't work with that. Whereas if you ask me, like you mentioned the word somatic, as you talk about this, what do you notice in your body? This is something I can do something about or experience or tolerate or have a different relationship with. I can notice, oh, there's a sensation in my chest that I can work with versus, for example, a feeling of hopelessness, which I don't feel like there's anything I can really do with that. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, yeah, I like working with trauma because I think that underneath a lot of um, core issues in people's lives, the things that are really holding them back are these traumas that are not being addressed. and. Um, oftentimes in traditional talk therapy, you can talk and talk about it, and it just kind of ends up being this looping process where nothing's really mm -hmm. changing. Um, but I was introduced to trauma work, EMDR, in grad school, and I quickly started to notice the difference. Right away, clients who had trauma for years, who weren't getting it integrated, weren't really making a lot of progress, suddenly using those somatic you know, uh, modalities um, really their lives started to transform. And so um, as a therapist, that was really exciting for me to see. What I love about TCCLA is I feel like, I feel so grounded in what we do. Mm. You know, I feel like, you know, I, I have a client in front of me and, you know, they're telling me about what's going on with them. And I'm like, okay, EMDR, this, that, this. I have, I already have a game plan that I can draw from in place. So it's really, it's pretty easy to, to get a, a plan going for them. I love the fact that there is such a solid plan and that, you know, we come together and really discuss our plans and how things are going. And it's not just drawing from whatever's in our minds, but really evidence-based, um, good modalities and good support. One of the things that I keep in mind here with the team is what we're talking about is Feedback, reflection, and planning. So we give each other feedback on what we hear going on with each other's clients. Um, we also seek feedback from clients and discuss that because there's no way you can know sometimes that asking someone what's going on. So feedback, reflection, reflecting what's going on with this person, really thinking about it, and then planning. What's the plan? What's the plan for next time? How can we help this person succeed? How? How can we move them from wherever they are to where they want to go? Well, I just really enjoy my clients. I really like connect with them. I really can like get where they're coming from. And I really have a lot of compassion for them. They really are coming in um, with difficult stories, difficult circumstances. Um, but I really believe in the tools that we have. And I wholeheartedly believe that we have options and tools to help them heal. Um, so I love being able to offer some of that healing to clients. 
I really like, well, first of all, I really like the team, and I really enjoy our times on Tuesday when we get to work together and talk about, you know, our successes. So I know this is very brief, but we really wanted it to be brief, just for you to get a little sense of who we are, what we do, and so uh, in a moment I'll show you around the offices, and thank you for coming today. Come on in. So this is one of our offices. You can see it's nice and spacious, comfortable, safe, etc. Here's Jennifer. Hi. And so let me tell you a little bit about our process. So when you call, you will reach Tom on the phone and he will do an intake with you. And then we will send you an email. By the way, come on in. Here is another one of our offices. This is the, the Orchid office. Here's Sarah. Hi again. <laughs> Welcome. During the intake call, what will happen is we will try and match you up with the best therapist possible. After talking with you, finding out a little bit about what's going on. By the way, here's Victoria. Hi. There she is. Okay. So we will uh, match you up with the best therapist possible. Um, we went paperless, so we'll send you all the documents online, which is nice because then you're not sitting there filling out paperwork in the session. And also, let me encourage you to take a look at our website, tccla.com, um, for more information about how we work. But what we really want to do is work in a way that's going to work for you. So thanks for coming today to our virtual open house. Hope to see you soon. And take good care. Bye. Okay. Thank you for taking that tour with us. And let's see if we are up. I think we are. Okay, my producer's telling me sound is good, and let me, uh, all right, so uh, this is going to be a short talk, Modalities for Healing Trauma, with our virtual open house here at TCCLA. So welcome back to another brief talk. In previous talks, I have talked a lot about types of trauma, uh, symptoms that arise from the impact of trauma. So today, my producer, Tom, felt that the most important thing I could talk about would be uh, specific modalities for healing trauma. And uh, he wants me to do this in about 10 minutes, so we'll give it a try. Um, in case you don't know who I am, I'm Dr. Deborah Sweet. I'm a licensed psychologist and a trauma specialist. My goal today is to give you a quick introduction into treatments specifically designed to treat trauma, because here's the key. We need modalities that work with the nervous system and the subcortical regions of the brain to resolve trauma. Then we can begin to work with the various talk therapies, such as CBT, psychodynamic, and more. Um, I'm going to give you some brief explanations of how therapists who are trained in trauma work with trauma. I will talk about somatic therapies, EMDR, attachment-focused EMDR, and brain spotting. Um, I am certified in all of these modalities and could talk about this for hours. So please understand this is my attempt to share as briefly as possible uh, and give you an idea of what these approaches are and how they work. So uh, there'll be a lot left out. There are many nuances to this work. And these modalities are really significant because for example, when I was born in the early 1960s, these didn't exist, uh, or they hadn't been compiled into um, usable methods like they are now. Let me also say, if you have questions during this brief talk uh, for me to answer at the end, you can type in the chat window or email us at info at tccla.com, or you can text us at 310-720-8200. All right, let me start by saying that what we call resourcing is the most, one of the most important things we can do before moving into trauma work, no matter what modality you're using. Um, if you're a naturally resourced person, that is great. But for many people, we need to start by accessing a peaceful place inside. Uh, this is a place that when you think about it, you know you feel good. This place can be from your imagination or a place you've actually been to, or sometimes even better, a combination of both. And if it's difficult to find a place, this is where a therapist can really help. Also, 
noticing where we feel good in our bodies is part of the, the resourcing that needs to take place before we process um, material. So here's the thing. We know how to feel bad, but it's important to notice that when we feel good, where we feel that in our bodies. And this is the work of Antonio Damasio, a professor of neuroscience at USC, if you want to read more. So with this in mind, one of the ways of working with trauma are with the somatic therapies, such as somatic experiencing from Peter Levine, sensory motor psychotherapy from Pat Ogden, the trauma resiliency model or TRIM from Elaine Miller Karras and Lori Leach, or Hakomi from Ron Kurtz and other somatic therapies as well. But these are the, the top ones that, uh, that we know about. So here's the thing, soma means the body. Somatic therapies mean including the body in the treatment um, of working with trauma. So let me explain. Um, also, I want to give you a quote from Peter Levine. He says, traumatic symptoms arise when the activation mobilized, meet, mobilized to meet an extreme or life-threatening event is not fully discharged or integrated. I'll say more about that in a moment. But this idea of integration is really vital to recover from trauma. When a person experiences an event they find traumatic, their bodies will go into states of fight, flight, or freeze. And it's really important to note we cannot talk ourselves out of these autonomic nervous system responses. These sensations disrupt our ability to self-regulate, that is our ability to calm or to motivate ourselves as needed. And here's the thing, some people get stuck on on, they become hypervigilant, um, irritable, anxious, very anxious, angry. Other people get stuck on off, disconnection, depression, numbness, exhaustion, or dissociation. Somatic therapies help people re-regulate their nervous system by noticing specific sensations in their bodies as they talk. In somatic therapy, we process both the content and the sensations that go along with that content. So, in its most basic form, here's an example of what somatic therapy sounds like in session. A therapist might say, um, you know, as we talk about this, uh, this issue that you brought in, what do you notice in your body right now? What are you sensing? Um, what do you notice happening inside? And a person might say, well, gosh, as I'm talking about this, I feel constriction in my chest. Or they may not know what they're feeling in their body. They're not used to being in their body. So we teach you the language of sensation so that a person can recognize what's happening in their body. Because here's the thing. Most of us are up in our heads. We're really not in our bodies at all. So if a person becomes stuck, we might ask, what do you notice in your chest, your stomach, your jaw? You know, what do you notice in terms of heat, cold, tension, or other sensations as you talk about this issue that you brought in? In other words, uh, we follow you, but we are gently guiding you too. Um, it's also really important to note that you do not have to report everything to the therapist that, that happened in a traumatic event. And what we know from that is it creates a tremendous amount of relief in a lot of people that they don't have to go through everything that happened. So somatic therapies create resiliency in the nervous system by encouraging a person to track their activation as they describe what happened before, during, or after an event. Somatic therapies and enable a person to maintain equilibrium while processing events by working with small pieces at a time and discharging or releasing sensations such as uh, maybe heat, uh, shaking, trembling, tears, chills, laughter that arise. These are all forms of release. And generally with regular talking, that doesn't, doesn't happen. So these somatic therapies can really help move this material, so to speak. Um, let me say that it is my opinion that underneath all good therapy is somatic awareness because it helps release activation in the nervous system, it teaches us how to regulate the nervous system, and helps us integrate 
difficult material. So speaking of integration, let's move into EMDR or reprocessing therapy. Here is an excellent quote by Laurel Parnell. In its broadest definition, trauma is an experience that causes one to develop erroneous beliefs about oneself or the world and to behave in ways that are not skillful. EMDR, also known as eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, works by providing side-to-side -side stimulation of the right and left hemispheres of the brain. Um, it's part of a very specific protocol uh, with specific questions, which I'll get into in a moment. So it helps process past events and helps us feel differently, not only about what happened, but ourselves and our beliefs. I like to say um, in explaining EMDR, have you ever noticed you feel better after taking a walk? Part of the reason for this is you are, uh, as you take each step, right, left, right, left, you are stimulating right and left hemispheres of the brain. Um, and stimulating those right and left hemispheres of the brain help us integrate our experiences, help us integrate thinking and feeling, which in trauma a lot of times can be separate, and also verbal and nonverbal material. Uh, EMDR was developed in 1987 by Francine Shapiro. Multiple studies over many years indicate the uh, evidence-based effectiveness of EMDR in helping people recover from a variety of traumatic experiences. In its most basic form, here's an example of what an EMDR experience would sound like or be like in session. So similar to watching the scenes of a movie, a therapist asks the patient to bring to mind an incident remembering the images, uh, sounds, possibly um, aromas, impressions, and other sensations. Uh, the negative thinking caused by the incident and the new thoughts or beliefs the person would like to have and what number they would give it between zero and 10, with zero being not disturbing at all and 10 being highly disturbing. And by the way, uh, it's always best when having a first EMDR session to pick something that's not a 10. Picking something around a five is a really good idea because your system can get a, um, a feel for what the process is going to be like. Uh, there are multiple ways of providing bilateral stimulation. The original way was the therapist would move their fingers from side to side in front of the client, and the client followed their fingers with the eyes. And after a number of sets of movements, connections are made. Clients generally uh, think and feel differently about the incident, similar incidents, and themselves. Um, also, as time has gone by, it has become clear that eye movements are not the only way to provide um, integration. The therapist may also might tap on the person's knees or on the backs of their hands or by use of pulsers. I'll kind of show you what these things are. They gently buzz in each hand. A lot of people find that actually really uh, so enjoyable, really. Um, or the use of sound alternating ear to ear. Could be music or could be ocean, different sounds. Uh, the key is for the brain to receive um, stimulation to both sides of the brain. Also, from Laurel Parnell, who modified an, the EMDR protocol, she modified it into what we would call an attachment-focused EMDR. We tap in what are called resource figures to help someone navigate uh, difficult events or memories. So these are nurturing figures, protective figures, and wisdom figures. And what I always tell people is I'm never going to send you into a memory alone. So sometimes we come up with these resource figures in advance and sometimes in the middle of a piece, it, what it might sound like is who could we bring in for you or who could we bring in for that child to help. Um, I will also tell you that um, if this part is difficult, because for a lot of people it is, again, this is where a therapist can really help. Okay. And now let's move into finally brain spotting. So David Grand out of New York, uh, he invented brain spotting and he says, where you look affects how you feel. This quote is one of the core ideas of brain spotting. So to explain what a brain spot is, I always like to give an example. If you ask me right now, hey, where's a good place to get coffee? For whatever reason, my eyes go up and to the right and I'm looking for the picture in my mind of the coffee place. 
this is where I'm able to access the visual that goes with it. When we process emotional material, there are spots that correspond to. So if someone had, let's say, a great vacation or horrible vacation, if you ask them to, to describe it to you, I can pretty much guarantee their eyes are going to go somewhere past you. And the thing is, we look at brain spots all the time when we're thinking. If you ask somebody, you know, quick, calculate a math problem, they, they generally will look up interestingly. So in more of a, a clinical explanation, I can say this. By locating eye positions or brain spots that correlate with events or memories, plus an attuned relationship with the therapist, uh, healing and resolution of issues that are held deeply in the nonverbal, non-cognitive areas of the brain are possible. And now back to normal speak. Um, it is important to notice here that trauma is held in the subcortical regions in the brain. If it weren't, we could just talk and it would be gone. Um, and we know that talk therapy helps. It's talk therapy is in the, the neocortex, the new part of the brain, generally speaking, which is really helpful for processing uh, current events or making decisions. Brain spotting and these other modalities engage in the subcortical regions to process traumas held in more primitive parts of the brain using focused activation and focused mindfulness. So, in its most basic form, here's an example of how a brain spotting session would unfold. So number one, the client states the issue, the event, the memory. Second, the therapist asks, where is the activation in your body? Um, you know, again, it might be something is uncomfortable in the, the chest, stomach, or throat. And what number would you give it between zero and 10? Again, zero being not disturbing at all and 10 being highly disturbing. And then after these things are established, the therapist moves a pointer across the client's visual field. So I'll actually show you, I have here a pointer. And what we do is we say, um, of course I would extend this all the way, and you, you know, it's a different experience in person, but we, we would say, is that, um, uh, excuse me, is that material, uh, as I hold this pointer, is it stronger on this side? this side or this side. And then after we find the general region, then we fine tune it. And we find a spot, I know this sounds strange, we find a spot that matches what's going on inside. So when we find a spot, it'll be much more intense. So maybe it's nothing here, but as we get over to here, well, now I feel it. It's really fascinating. Um, and what people report is they feel distinct sensations when they find that spot. Um, the therapist checks in with the client. Um, and by the way, what arises for different people is completely different. So for one person, they might get a flash of images. For another person, they might feel sensations like, oh, all of a sudden I feel uh, warm, or they might feel a little shaky. Um, it definitely connects with the nervous system. So uh, for some, it's images. For others, it's sensations, thoughts, memories, or emotions. Um, and similar to the previous modalities, again, a person does not have to report everything that's uh, about that traumatic incident, um, which is, again, something that can provide a lot of relief. Um, we stay current by talking about what is arising in the moment. Um, also to note, brain spotting can be used for performance enhancement with musicians, athletes, and actors. Uh, it's an effective method of helping them discharge activation associated with performance, provide greater focus, and help people return to, like for actors, it can help them return to the spot that's concurrent with who they are versus the character they're playing, for example. So, in conclusion, somatic therapies, EMDR, and brain sprouting are all effective ways of reprocessing or resolving trauma. These have been very brief uh, explanations of what it takes therapists years to learn, and I hope they've been helpful in giving a general idea about how these therapies work. Um, if you would like to find a provider that offers these therapies, if you're here in Los Angeles, wonderful. Feel free to give us a call, and if it's not with us, we will help you find a place to the best of our ability. Um, if you are out of state, and you want to find a provider, you can go to the following websites, uh, traumahealing.org, sensorymotorpsychotherapy.org, 
the trauma res or sorry trauma resource institute.com emdria.org which is e m d r i a.org and brainspotting.com so now i will answer some questions you can type them into the chat window or email us at info at tccla.com, or you can also text us at 310-720-8200, uh, and then Tom is going to uh, uh, hand me those questions, and also I can see the chat bar. So let's see here. Okay, Tom, are we ready to answer questions? Okay, great. Okay, so I have a question. So how does it really work when you are working with some really upsetting um, material? So, um, okay, so first thing we wanna do is we wanna come from a resource place. I always tell people we will not dive in and we will not fall in to traumatic material. One of the reasons we need to be resourced before we go into traumatic material, and I know this is really different than a lot of talk therapy that a lot of us grew up with, is that we want to have something to um, sort of pivot off to. It's kind of like, uh, remember Steve Hoskins and, uh, in the somatic trainings talks about this uh, sort of figure eight. So we go towards the trauma work and then we come back to the resource. We go to the trauma work and we come back to the resource. Um, it's really important to have something to work off of. And the other really important piece is that we want to work with one piece at a time. So, for example, when there's a trauma, I like to say, here's the trauma, and then there's different pieces. And what's really interesting is a person might come in one day, and one of those pieces stands out more than on another day. Like, you know, this piece was bothering them one day, but they come in, and it's really this piece. So. Um, we're strategic about how we approach it. Um, sometimes we'll have people email us uh, uh, several days in advance of the session so that if there really are nuances, that we know what they are and we can uh, get right into the work. Um, and then sometimes people come in and they really just want to talk about it first um, and then get into it. So let me see here. Yeah, so I think that answers it. Um, oh, and then also let me say in terms of that resourcing, um, and when I say resourcing, I mean, you know, do I feel resourced inside? Can I access that peaceful place? Um, can we bring in some resource figures? Again, uh, uh, from Laurel Parnell, protect, uh, resource figures, a, a nurturing figure, protective figure, wisdom figure, bringing those in as we go into the trauma work. Okay, let's see, here's another one. How much do we talk about a memory? Um, so we talk about a memory, I, I guess you're probably, whoever's writing this is probably thinking when I said the part where you don't have to describe everything that happens. So let me say a little bit more about that. Um, we talk about it just enough to bring up the activation. Um, because if there's no activation, there's nothing to attach to, um, if that makes sense. It's, it's kind of complicated. But um, we talk about a memory in its simplest form just enough to kind of find it. And then one of the things that's really important for the nervous system, too, is to understand we can go towards it and to come back. I, I like to say it, we dip our toe in, we dip the toe out. Because a lot of us, uh, when we go into our traumatic material, um, a lot of us are afraid we're not going to be able to come back out. So there is a, a, some skill that needs to be learned there. And it's really, really important that we know that. Okay, let's see. How do most people leave emotionally after one of these sessions? You know, people, um, for the most part, share that they feel uh, more peaceful, uh, stronger, uh, they feel safe, they feel supported. Um, sometimes you would say, you know, I just, I just feel better. And, and that's our goal. I, there are other forms of therapy uh, where 
people are bringing up things and then they're supposed to you know go and think about it that's not this um, it is our goal to always have someone leave in a resource place and by the way sometimes uh, we'll say um, you know uh, as you uh, walk back to your car I want you to just be in your body keeping and then uh, another aspect of, of uh, trauma work, we talk about grounding, tracking, resourcing, and also orienting. And so orienting is really just looking around. So if, in fact, if someone's having panic, it's really helpful sometimes to um, just, you know, right now, notice three blue things around you can be really helpful to kind of get more grounded and come back into the space. Um, I have no idea what time it is. I'm going to check with Tom real quick. What do we have? A couple more minutes? Okay. All right. One more question here. That was really great and informative. I'm so glad. <laughs> what do you recommend people do between sessions? Oh, that's a great question. Okay. A lot. Um, in terms of somatic homework, what's interesting is I will often say to people, I want you to notice pleasant and neutral sensations. We are all accustomed, we know how to feel bad, but to actually take the time to notice neutral and pleasant sensations. If you get a phone call and you feel good, where do I feel good in my body? Seeing if you can slow down a little bit. And speaking of slowing down, I would recommend meditation. And, I've, and if meditation is hard, do guided meditations. Insight Timer uh, is one of my favorites. I like Insight Timer and... Um, Headspace is wonderful too. Guided meditations can be really helpful. Um, I strongly recommend writing in a journal. And one of the things that I recommend between sessions is, uh, especially if someone's dealing with a lot of uh, anxiety or a lot of depression, if you have a moment, just a moment where you're feeling better, write that down. Or if there was a success in some way, maybe a dealing with a family member or a friend and you liked the way you handled it, writing that down. Um, nutrition can't say enough about this a lot of times when we don't feel good we don't eat right and so trying to get proper nutrition is very important um, exercise and I know for me when I have been when I was recovering from my trauma exercise was really difficult but it turns out that exercise can mean just walking uh, Tai Chi yoga dance um, uh, let's see, uh, reading uplifting material. Uh, there's a wonderful magazine called Spirituality and Health. It might be called Health and Spirituality. Forgive me, I've been taking it for years. Anyway, uplifting um, articles, uh, connecting with friends. Even when we don't feel well, it's good to connect with friends or go to a movie, go see some comedy. Uh, if you're part of a 12-step uh, group or a, or a spiritual practice of some kind, showing up to those, you know, finding support. Um, and sometimes uh, even just doing something unexpected, uh, you know, taking a hike or going to the beach or going somewhere you'd never normally go, all these things can help us. And let me see, there is actually one more question here. Uh, my husband is new to therapy. How do I know which modality is best? Um... It would depend on the material that he's bringing in. Um, also, it depends on how the person responds to the different modalities. So, for example, some people uh, really gently need to be introduced to somatic work. Um, for some people, being in their body is just not a place they want to be. So how somatic work is introduced is really vital. Uh, for some people, um, Brain spotting can be too intense. Um, you know, I showed you earlier the pointer. For some people, when they're looking at the pointer, it can be, um, for some people, it just really helps them focus. I feel so connected. And for other people, it can be just slightly disorienting. Um, and even with that, sometimes it's a couple of times, the person will come back and say, well, let me try that one more time and that'll work. So in in the brief, most brief answer I can give, um, for your husband, um, the one thing I'd say if he was going to go get trauma treatment is I would say be sure they offer at least one of these modalities. Um, 
just because research shows that just talking about it, a lot of times it just uh, can create kind of a, a, a looping experience. And you really want to make sure that um, whatever therapy that he's getting, that it's connecting with the nervous system um, in some way. All right. And if you have more questions, you can, uh, if this, if you see this on YouTube or, or wherever on our website, uh, you can always email me at info at tccla.com. I want to thank you for coming to our second virtual open house and talk on modalities for treating trauma. Um, if you tuned in late, there is a link on the top of our homepage uh, that'll take you to the YouTube channel. And Tom will post this soon, probably within a few days. And thanks again for coming. Take good care.